Good evening. Shall I whisper? Good evening and welcome to the annual council meeting of Rother District Council. Councillors and officers are reminded to put their mobile phones or electronic device on silent if they have one near them and those present in the room should face forward, speak directly into their microphones and not place papers or electronic devices between themselves and the microphones. Please would remote participants mute microphones when not speaking as this will reduce feedback and background noise and save bandwidth to prevent loss of connection. Members of the council joining us remotely should leave cameras on, officers leave, and officers leave cameras on only for the agenda item when they are speaking. Members present in the room will be invited to speak first. Those members joining us remotely will then be invited to speak and they should indicate their wish to do so by using the raise your hand facility. Please be aware that there can be a time delay of around five seconds whilst a remote participant appears on the screen. Thank you. And before I begin the agenda tonight, I would just like to hold a minute's silence for Jonathan Johnson, the councillor for Breeden Udemore, who passed away on the 18th of March. Please be upstanding. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Right, uh, agenda item two on mine, but it's possibly one. Apologies for absence. Are there any, please? Councillor Stevens. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item three. First business to be the election of the Chairman of the Council for the ensuing year. Could I have nominations for the appointment of Chairman of Council, please? Councillor Timpey. Yeah, I'd like to nominate Councillor Cathy Harmer. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone seconding that nomination? Chair, yeah, I'd be absolutely delighted to second that. I know the Councillor Cathy will do a great job and enhance the role of the Council. Thank you, Councillor Project. Are there any other nominations? Thank you. There being no other nomination, I declare that Councillor Cathy Harmer has been elected as Chairman of Rother District Council for the following year. That's right. Please excuse us while we exit stage left from your...
off. Apologies. Um, declare that I take office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you very much. Okay, so I hope you'll all bear with me. I'm at the end of a cold and I've uh, been losing my voice slightly and I also um, have a tickly cough, so if I have to stop for a while, many apologies. Um, so could I have nominations for the appointment of Vice Chairman of the Council, please? <laughs> Lady, Lady Chairman, it gives me great pleasure to nominate um, Andrew Meir, my, my friend and colleague. Um, if I can say one or two things about him, because he's, uh, he's a modest fellow, and um, maybe one or two things that people don't know. Um, I've got to know him pretty well during the last three years, because we've shared a car, and we've travelled for many hours together from our distant bailiwicks in Fairlight and um, where I live. Um, I think I very quickly realised that Andrew had many of the qualities to make him a first-rate councillor. And such he has proved to be. Um, he's been an assiduous ward member. I think that the villages he represents have been very lucky to have somebody so able and so conscientious as their advocate. Um, I use the word advocate advisedly because Andrew's strong legal background made him a natural choice to be chairman of the um, licensing committee, and he has impressed everybody by his competence in that role. He's also a member of the planning committee, um, which I'm also on, and so I've been in a good position to observe him in action. And I'm full of admiration for the scrupulous objectivity he manages to show and how he manages to avoid the prejudice and partiality, which I find so difficult to avoid. Um, Andrew is a very convinced Liberal Democrat, but he is a generous Liberal Democrat, and he will never be needlessly partisan in his capacity as vice and later as hopefully as chairman. He will make an excellent chairman, presiding over our discussions with gravitas, but also with humour and warmth. I commend him to you very strongly. Do we have a second? Uh, oh dear. Oh gosh, gosh. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'll speak, I think I'll speak quietly. Um, I'd like to second the nomination uh, from Councillor Norton of Andrew Meir as Vice Chairman of this Council. Since being elected at the last election, Andrew has been a valuable member of our group, and it is excellent that a rural member is being nominated for this post this time. I just hope that you, Madam Chairman, and the Vice Chairman, get to experience the benefits of seeing and being involved in events and occasions throughout the whole district as we come out of this pandemic and get back to a bit of normality. I'd like to second the nomination. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Um, as councillor, are there any other nominations? No, thank you. As councillor mayor, is the only nomination. He is duly appointed as vice chairman of the council. Congratulations, Andrew. Thank you. Very much. And uh, the, de the Declaration of Acceptance. I, Andrew Stanley Mir, having been elected to the office of Vice Chairman of the District Council, declare that I shall take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability.
And I, I thank you all for the confidence reposed in me, which I hope I shall be able to live up to. Thank you. And I look forward to working with Councillor Harmer very much. Thank you very much, Councillor. And um, likewise, I'm looking forward to working with you too. Um, item, agenda item 15. Do I have your approval to sign the minutes of the council meetings held on the 21st of February and the 7th of March as a correct record of the proceedings? Well, thank you very much. And this uh, is agenda item number 16, which is a chairman's communications. Um, could I ask at this point if anyone would like to say a, fair, a few words um, about our dear councillors who we lost, uh, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Maynard. Thank you very, very much indeed, Madam Chairman, and may be the first to congratulate you on your appointment. Um, as many of you will know, Jonathan was a good friend uh, to many in this chamber. I have to say, across the political divide, his sense of bonhomie and the fact that he was always uh, a cheerful fellow endeared him to many. Um, he served this council on two separate occasions. Firstly, from 1999 to 2003, when it was a single-member ward in Breed and Udemore. And then he was my uh, co-ward councillor for the then Breed Valley Ward from... 2007 until 2019, when once again Breed Valley returned, sorry, Breed and Udemore returned to be a, a single member ward. Um, he enjoyed his time on council. He particularly enjoyed two particular um, parts in his political career, and that was that uh, clearly he served as chairman of the council, and I think that was something that he unexpectedly enjoyed, and the very fact that he was a, a naturally a people person meant that he made a very, very good uh, chairman of council. He also enjoyed his cabinet role um, on sport and leisure, uh, very much enjoyed that because as many of you know, Jonathan was very fond of sports, all sports, but he particularly enjoyed obviously his own sports of, of um, hunting, fishing, shooting, um, and obviously his, his farming background meant that he was, as many of you know, um, a shepherd for parts of the year up until very, very recently. And if anybody wanted to know about shooting, shepherding, fishing, and any of those things, Jonathan was always the first one to uh, give you a long diatribe because he was very passionate about his, um, his, uh, uh, his love of rural pastimes. Um, but most importantly, I think I want to stand here today to just remember a friend as well as a colleague because he was somebody who was ext extremely popular within Breed and Udemore, but in the wider, I'm not going to say across the whole of Rother, because quite clearly as chairman, he was known across the whole of Rother for, for a year. But the fact of the matter is that uh, he had a, a very wide circle of friends. Um, a lot of them are sitting in this chamber today. But he just was simply a very nice chap, and it is a huge loss. And frankly, in this day and age, um, it was a somewhat premature loss. And of course, our thoughts are with our former councillor colleague, Gillian, and, and their extended family, because it came a time, I have to say, when Jonathan was enjoying living life as much as he ever had. In fact, I'll go as far as to say, at this particular time, I think Jonathan, and those of us who knew him well, know that he was the happiest he'd ever been. And that is particularly sad. Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. Anyone else like to say a few words? Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chairman. I think... Um, Jonathan was elected at, uh, back onto the council at the same time I was elected on, and I think for the last 16 years he's been a, a figure here that we've all looked up to, and, and a larger-than-life figure. As, as many of you will know, my wife is a parish clerk for Breed, and Jonathan was one of her parish councillors, and in the short time that she knew him, I know she had an awful lot of respect for him, and he was a larger-than-life character in the village as well, and well thought of uh, as, a, as a Breed parish councillor. So on behalf of, of her and, and our group and, and everyone on this side of the chamber, we'd like to offer our condolences to Gillian and, uh, and to the, the, the group opposite. Obviously, it was very, um, very popular amongst them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Very sad indeed. Um, we move on now to the Chairman's communications. 
Um, so I haven't got a lot of engagements to communicate with because I'm new. So um, I've just put something small together for tonight. Um, firstly, I'd like to offer my sincere thanks to all members. I'm really honoured to represent Rother, and I'm very much looking forward to visiting our wider community. During my year as mayor, I was invited to many churches and listened to many sermons. And the general message for me was the same. It's all about caring for your community. And whether you're a believer or not, that's no bad thing. So for my term in office, I am pleased to have chosen Father Robert Coates from St. Augustine's as my chaplain. He had close links with the late Councillor Stuart Earl and Councillor Deidre De Williams. And this is important to me. Father Robert will attend our next meeting. Being a female in politics is very rewarding. I guess um, I could say sisters are doing it for themselves. Or I, c I could say all the ladies. Or I could say woman on the moon. And I, I could say I'm feeling a song coming on here. <laughs> At the same time, it can be challenging, particularly on family life. In reality, we can only give our all with the support of a good partner. In my case, he's standing up there somewhere. Um, and of course, um, my ward count, ward count fellow councillor, Sarah Errington, I've got to give her a big thank you for her support and her excellent teamwork. Thank you, Sarah. Our family motto is nothing is impossible and we strive, as I'm sure you all do, to be the best you can be, but no one is perfect. We are living in an ever-changing world and are, face, and are facing unprecedented challenges. In my term of office, I would ask we remember we are elected by and represent our public. Important decisions are made in this historic room. Healthy debate is great and always welcome, but please, let's conduct our business with courtesy and above all, please be kind. Thank you. So we now move to um, agenda item 17 um, and a vote of thanks and I call on Councillor Terry Byrne, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm more than glad to move the vote of thanks to our outgoing chairman, Councillor Drayson. Um, I was the first chair of this new administration, and I have to say that I sort of walked into it and, what's the word, winged it, really. Um, I, I hope I did an adequate job, however, totally eclipsed by Councillor Drayson's Councillor Dressing is one of nature's natural chairman. Mm -hmm. he, he fully understands the protocols and sticks by them. He's totally impartial and gave everybody a fair chance to express their points of view. And I think the quality of debate in this chamber under his chairmanship was, was well, I was going to say second to none, but if you look at, was it Hanworth Parish Council? I think, I think we're in the top of the, I think we're, we're, we're first division when it comes to conducting ourselves as members under, <coughs> and under the chairman of Brian Drayson. It was, it was a lot easier. The other thing I would say is his, his contribution while he was chairman, he also sat on the Constitutional Review Committee, and his work on that was, again, outstanding. His understanding of what should go in a procedure and what shouldn't, and where the loopholes might be to let things get bogged down in between, is it this, is it that? Hey, fine, forensic. So, again, Brian, thank you very much for a year in the chair, which was absolutely brilliant, and I'm just two years in the chair, not to get in COVID, but, uh, and I'm glad to say you totally eclipsed me, but that was probably the easiest bit. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bain. Do we have a second, Councillor Bayliss? Yes, and it's, and it's my pleasure. I was going to turn around, but I know I've got to face the front here. I, it's my pleasure um, to second the vote of thanks um, to Councillor Drayson. He, he had a, a, a sort of difficult first year, extremely difficult, 
but he steered us through uh, COVID and learning how to do uh, meetings online, you know, with with good grace, with aplomb, um, with courteousness, and you know, generally the whole year, the whole two years of his um, service to this council, um, he's he's been fantastic and a fantastic leader, and um, I'm very pleased uh, that we've had him um, as our chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bates. Is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment? No. Um, I'd just like to put my thanks, Councillor Grayson, for giving me the extra year to learn and for, as it's already been said, shepherding, shepherding us through a really challenging time when no one knew what to do, when we went remote. Um, you got the technology completely correct and um, thank you very much for that. It must have been really difficult. And my extra bit of thanks is for letting me sit in the Formula One racing car because you couldn't do the engagement. Priceless. Thank you very much indeed. As it's been moved and seconded, could I have approval of the vote um, of thanks to Councillor Drayson? I conclude. Oh, sorry. And I pass over to Councillor uh, Brian Drayson. Thank you, Chair. I think I've pressed the right. Yes, right. Uh, thank you, Councillor Vernon, Councillor Bayliss, uh, for those kind words. Uh, colleagues, I was honoured, unlike Councillor Byrne, who wings it, I've written it. Uh, colleagues, I was honoured to have been elected by you as Chairman of Brother District Council in June 2020. Not May, of course, because COVID even affected the beginning of that year, and that was delayed. We then had a year of online meetings. I believe that collectively, officers and councillors, with quite a bit of help from IT, made a pretty good job of it. And I'd like to thank you all for your contribution you made to our success. Having had a year like no other in 2020, you kindly gave me a second year in the hope that life would have returned to a more normal routine. <sighs> there were glimpses during 2021, and I did undertake some official visits. Mostly in Bexhill because of COVID, but also in Rye, Rye Harbour, Battle, Beckley, Winchelsea and Westfield. It was an honour and a privilege to represent this council and to meet some of the people in our community who do that bit extra to help their fellow residents. Our level of government will never be as quick to react to events as parish and town councils, voluntary groups, self-health groups and simple good neighbours. We saw this in relation to the pandemic and recently, to a lesser degree, Storm Eunice. Councillors are not magical beings. They are first and foremost members of the community they represent. And I know that many, as individuals, help the local response to both COVID and the storms. District councillors will always need slightly lo longer lead time. And I want to pay tribute, lest we forget, to the work that our officers did throughout the pandemic and my two years as chair. If a department wasn't directly affected, its staff were often reassigned to support those that were. When wearing the chairman's chain, <clears throat> there are some people who quickly become your best friends and help you navigate <coughs> a safe course. So in addition to thanking heads of service, department managers, and all officers and staff generally for the work they've done and continue to do, I must single out some people for a special thank you. Our Chief Executive, Malcolm Johnston, has always been available to talk with at any time. He never seemed to mind, even if it was in the evening or at weekends. Sorry, Malcolm. Our Monitoring Officer and Democratic Services Manager, Lisa Cooper, has helped steer me through chairing meetings. One of her most important pieces of advice was, that's up to you, you're the chairman. <laughs> Now, she said that quite a bit over the two years, and when you first hear that, you think, well, that's not very helpful, is it? And then, actually, you realise just how important it is. No one has the answer to everything, so you just have to do what you feel is right. I'd also thank, like to thank the leader and deputy leader of the council and the group leaders for making the meetings interesting, sometimes challenging, 
but always a pleasure. Finally, and those of you who have had the privilege to sit in the chair previously, will agree that the advice support from Jane McCulloch is invaluable. Oh, oh, don't sneak up on me like that. Um, her official job description includes the word chairman's assistant. Those words cover a multitude of tasks, all performed with a firm grasp of protocol. You soon become aware if something is appropriate or otherwise, but all done with a cheerfulness and dedication as to what is best for Rother. Thank you, Joe. And as I wish Councillor Harmer all the best for the year ahead. I'm very pleased to add that last week I received an invitation to a garden party at Buckingham Palace next week. So, whoopee! Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grayson. That's really kind. Um, so we'll move on to our next agenda item, agenda item 20. And I confirm that in accordance with the current executive arrangements, Councillor Oliver has been appointed leader of the council until May 2023. Agenda item 21, appointment of deputy leader to the council. Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I would uh, have much pleasure in confirming that Councillor Projac has been appointed as Deputy Leader of the Council. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Agenda item 22. Appointment of Cabinet Members. Again, Councillor Oliver, please. Thank you. I, I would confirm the Cabinet will comprise the Leader and the following eight members with the following portfolios, which are listed on page three. That's Councillors. Projac, Bayliss, Byrne, Dixon, Field, J1, Timpey and Vine Hall. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Agenda item 23, appointment of members to the Joint Waste and Recycling Committee. Councillor Oliver. Uh, we will continue with the existing representatives uh, that have served us on this committee. That's <coughs> Councillor Projac and Field appointed to the um, council, as the council representative to the Joint Waste Committee and the Joint Waste and Recycling Committee with Councillors Bayliss and Byrne as substitutes. Thank you. Agenda item 24, appointment of Cabinet Spokesperson, Members Champions. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I think it is important that there are members that are involved as spokespersons because it gives them an involvement of what's going on within Council. And those that were appointed previously have discharged these duties uh, extremely well. I'd like to confirm that councillors Clark, Coleman, Maidley and Thomas have been reappointed as cabinet spokespersons, member champions on older persons, young persons, child poverty, well-being equality and the inclusiveness and promoting livable neighbourhoods, cycling and walking respectively. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Uh, agenda item 25, appointment of members of the Property Invest Investment Panel. Can Councillor Oliver? Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. The Leader of the Council, I'm prepared. I'm, I'm very pleased to confirm that Councillors Bayliss, Curtis, J1, Mia, Ol and myself, and Vinehall have been appointed as members of the Property Investment Panel. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item 26 to consider and approve as a detailed in Appendix 1 the committees to be established. The size and terms of reference, the allocation of seats to groups, and the nom nomination of group leaders to serve on each committee. Could I have a member to move on second the details as contained with Appendix 1, please? <coughs> Council Field, sorry, I didn't see your hand. I propose that, Chair. Thank you very much. Do we need a second here? Okay. Um, and now to change the Audit and Standards Committee, uh, Councillor Byrne came off and Councillor Langlands went on. This is the Chamber of Commerce, isn't it? Are the audits and standards? So, what we're voting on is an amendment. It's that as, a, as amended. Yes. As amended. So we take the vote. You're happy with that, Councillor Field? Yes. Thank you very much. 
Second. Thank you, Councillor Jason. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you very much. Agenda item 27. Um, are there any disclosures by members of personal and disclosable pecuniary interest in matters on the agenda? If so, please declare the nature of such interests and whether members regard the personal interest as prejudicial under terms of the Code of Conduct. Um, are there any further disclosure, are there any disclosure of interests? Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chairman. As, as a personal licence holder, uh, a gambling personal licence holder, uh, further on in the agenda, number th uh, item 30. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Anyone else? Thank you. Um, members are reminded to reiterate interest at the time the matter is discussed. Thanks. Agenda item 28, to receive the report of the Cabinet on matters for determination by full council at its meetings held on the 28th of March and the 9th of May. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I would like to move the uh, report of Cabinet meetings held on the 28th of March and the 9th of May be approved and adopted. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Councillor Procher. If members wish to reserve an item for discussion, please indicate as I call over. CB21-95, Community Infrastructure Levy Governance, Arrangements and Funding Decisions Protocol. No, thank you very much. Um, CB21-103, Dash reviews of the constitution. Thank you very much again. CB twenty one slash one hundred four member training and development strategy. Full set. Thank you very much. As none of the minutes have been reserved for discussion. And they've already been moved and seconded. I shall now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Karen. Thank you very much. Um, agenda item 29, to receive the report of Head of Paid Service in accordance with paragraph 17a of the Overview and Scrutiny Procedure Rules and paragraph 4 of the Budget and Policy Framework Procedure Rules. Of any urgent decisions taken at Cabinet meetings held on the 28th of March or the 9th of May 2022. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I would confirm that there were no urgent decisions taken <coughs> uh, by Cabinet at its meetings held on the 28th of March or the 9th of May. Thank you very much. Agenda item 30, to receive the report of the Licensing and General Purposes Committee on matters for determination by the full Council at its meeting held on the 17th of January 2022. Councillor Mia. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, <coughs> yes, th this, this uh, comes forward uh, on, on a time basis. It's something that we, we have to review and revise. I don't think there's anything significant in it. And uh, I propose that, that it is uh, adopted as, as proposed. Thank you, Councillor Mayor. Councillor Dixon, do you have anything to say on this, please? I will re declare my interest if it's discussed. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have a seconder? Thank you very much, Councillor Procher. If a member wishes to reserve an item for discussion, please indicate as I call over LG21-12, Gambling Act 2005, Statement of Principles. Thank you. As the minute has not been reserved for discussion and it has already been moved and seconded, 
I shall now put the motion to the vote. All in favour? Carry. Thank you very much. What do you want? Uh, agenda item 31, to receive and approve the report of the Chief Executive on appointment of representatives to outside bodies. Councillor Oliver. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Um, there are just a couple here um, that would need a little bit of an amendment. Um, Hastings and Brother Task Force um, it, it identifies to be removed from this, but we were actually going to keep this one on because it could be resurrected in the future, uh, and I would be the representative there. Um, and I believe that is the only one that needed some adjustment. Um, this was as a result of um, reviewing this uh, prior to, uh, after the report was issued. Thank you. Do I take it we have no amendments? Hmm? Okay. Um, any other nominations? Councillor Oliver. I would just like to, like to add that all those members that actually discharge the duties on this outside body is one I'm very, very grateful to because it's so important that we have representatives within Rother and the wider area. And it does take up a lot of work. I know a lot of colleagues here um, uh, have to uh, have commitments with their parish councils and various other groups. Um, but it is important that we maintain this level of profile within our district. Um, and I am very, very grateful for everyone that's discharged those duties. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Um, are there any... Um, bear with me, I've lost my spot. Are there any other... We, I think we, do we have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Pilcher. Any other nominations? No? Everyone happy? Um, so I'll put them, this motion to the vote, please. All those in favour? Harry, thank you very much. Okay, agenda item number 32. To receive the annual report on the Member Development Task Group. Council Projack. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like, obviously, to move this report. And in doing so, I would also like to pay tribute to those members who worked on, with me and with us and with our officers on, on a very, very extensive programme, which I feel that we should be quite proud of because we've gone from strength to strength, particularly in adapting to online training. Uh, obviously, there's some that have been face-to-face -face and have worked better face-to-face, -face, but actually I'm, I salute the members and officers who have actually delivered and um, taken part in the, in the training. Um, we had just at the last cabinet, we approved the strategy um, for, for the um, member training and development uh, to make it sure that it is fit for purpose, which we did at the last cabinet. Things that we're quite proud of, uh, one is working in partnership. Uh, we've worked in partnership with Wieldham, We've also worked in partnership with our town and parish councils, where appropriate, and we have recorded, uh, we've recorded training where we can. So if you missed it and you want to actually look at it, we have a place where you can go to actually access it. Um, the other thing that I always mention is actually the, the leak table of attendance, which you will find <coughs> on page 49. Of the, report, of the report, and you will see that we now have a joint first with <coughs> Councillor Cortell and Councillor Gray. Well done. And that's one of the issues that we always discuss at our member training sessions. Actually, uh, attendance is really quite good <coughs> on the whole, but there are people who don't come, and I wish Councillor Stevens was here because she worked hard in our group to encourage the usual suspects from, to come along. One of the comments in member training, one of the comments was, I feel, I don't know who made it, but it was, I feel I don't need to come because I've been a councillor a long time. I've forgotten the exact words, but it was, I, don't, I feel I don't need to. 
uh, I think members who do attend training will confirm, will agree with me, that actually you always learn something. You always learn something. And as you know, in local government, things are changing daily. And so our training is not only good for us to keep it up to date <coughs> and making, making the best decisions possible, it's actually also to get to know officers in a different way, to get to know each other in a different way. So there are always positive aspects to our training. We did actually um, send out, our officers sent out um, a query to those, those members who didn't attend more than five training sessions um, to try and find out what the barriers were to training. But actually, we didn't get much response to that. So, so we are trying very, very hard. The other thing that our officers are really disappointed with is when we don't give feedback. So I, th I think that is something we need to work on. Obviously, when your training's done, you move on and you go to different things and it gets forgotten, especially if you're online. So that's something that we need to nudge you along um, so that our officers can actually gauge whether the, a, a training session was useful or not. Um, we did look at uh, linking attendance uh, training to our allowance system, and we had quite a long debate about that. Uh, we did look at Braintree, what Braintree do is actually with, withhold, I think it's a twelfth of an allowance a monthly, so, that, uh, um, in, so to make sure that members do attend training. Long discussion on this, and Council Barnes will remember it, is that actually you can't really say to a member, you've got to attend training to get your allowance. So in the end, it would be a lot of work, a lot of administration, and perhaps we wouldn't achieve what we wanted it to achieve. But it, it did demonstrate our concerns. Um, finally, I think I need to mention what we've done, as well as partnership working. Uh, we go to our chairs and vice chairs regularly and ask them what training needs their members of their particular committees want. And that's been useful. I've talked about sharing with our parish and town councillors, which I hope is, has a positive effect. Uh, the other thing I'm really proud of is our carbon literacy training, uh, which is open to our officers and to our members. And the ambition is to do this right across all officers and all members. And we're working quite hard on finding ways of doing that. Uh, so far, we've had 17 members participate in the carbon literacy training. And again, I'd like to congratulate Councillor Stevens. She's not here, but she actually did it as well. She really really congratulate her on. We haven't had all the results yet um, in terms of cert certificates. It's a very long day, a whole day out of your, out of your busy lives, but it, it is actually a certificated carbon literacy certificate, which you can actually have a nice little logo on your, after your signature. Uh, so we've had 17 members do it and 24 officers. So we hope that that will be trickled down and it's something that's going to go on and on because it, it is a very, very good course. And as you know, carbon literacy and carbon reduction is one of our main aims on, on this council. So finally, thanking our democratic services. A huge amount of work there. Thank you, Lisa, particularly Julie as well. You did a great, great job there. Uh, so thank you to the team. And also <coughs> thank you to the councillors. Um, particularly um, Councillor Gray, who stood in and was really useful and joined in considerably. So a good team, Councillor Cook, who else is on the team? Um, thank you to all of you. And I commend this report to you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Pilchak. Do we have a second? Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Anyone want to discuss? Councillor Cortell. Uh, uh, oh dear, um, uh, I don't know how to remove the echo. Um, oh right, okay. Um, first of all, um, my congratulations to you, Chair. I'm um, showing you a superb Chair for Councillor the next year. And um, I commend Councillor Proshak and her team on the fantastic work uh, of the members' development group. Um, I've got one thing I'd like to highlight. Um, Elaine Bolton.
provided some outstanding interactive training. Uh, one of the uh, courses she ran was about chairing meetings, and that was interactive. Another was on overview and scrutiny skills, the whys, the whens, etc. Um, I hope that the next Council's Member Development Group will continue with Elaine Belton's training and have it in person in this chamber. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Quarter. All those in favour? Against? Carry it. Okay, so agenda item 33, to receive the annual report of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee submitted in accordance with Article 6 of the Constitution. Councillor Osborne. I'm almost scared of this machine. <laughs> as long as it works, I don't mind. Um, I, I'll start firstly by, by congratulating you, Madam Chairman, on, uh, on your new position um, as the principal citizen of the district. So um, there you go. Um, I'll be brief on this. It's, it's quite a long report, um, but, I'll, but I'll be brief. We've, if you've read through it, you'll, you'll see that we've done a, a, a fair amount of work this year. Um, I thank the members of the committee for, for the work they've put in, especially thanks to, to um, uh, Louise, who does everything for us, basically. <laughs> but uh, but no, she's, uh, she, she's really good and very helpful to us. Um, I think I'd, I'd better say thanks to Councillor Arrington, who is leading the committee. Um, it's been good to work with you. Um, and welcome back to Councillor Cortell, who probably never really left because he probably attended more meetings than most of us put together anyway. So, um, so, so that's good. But yeah, I, I think if you if you go through the report, you can see we've had a number of uh, of, of working groups work going on um, in difficult times. You know, uh, online, uh, some in person. Some have taken longer than, than we would ex uh, anticipate, but then we had a dodgy couple of years, to be honest. Um, but the work's good. We've done everything. Councillor Cook has, has been an excellent vice chairman. Um, and I don't think there's much else I can add, Chairman. So um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to, to take them. I will remind members that tomorrow at 2 o'clock we have a scrutiny um, work programme meeting. So if you've got items on the agenda there or on the work programme and you want to bring them forward, have a thought. And tomorrow we'll set up a new program works and go forward for next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Osborne. I say you move the report. Do we have a seconder, please? Councillor Cook, thank you. And all in favour? I'm very sorry. I should have asked comments before you put your hands up. Councillor Dixon, and my apologies. And then Councillor Field. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to, just wanted to um, draw attention to, to paragraph 23. During the period of the report, a total of 17 recommendations were made to Cabinet, 15 of which were supported. And I just think that goes to show how well scrutiny and Cabinet can work together for the good of the district without that um, being, being too partisan. And I think uh, we welcome on Cabinet what scrutiny say, we listen to what scrutiny say, and we act on what scrutiny say. And long may that continue. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Field, did you want to say something? I thought I saw a hand. Uh, no. Okay. Councillor Gailey. Uh, no. Huh? Okay. Uh, Councillor Oliver. Well, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I rather like that, principal citizen of the district. I have to remember that. Thank you for reminding us of all that was excellent. But I think that reading the content of this report, and I really echo what um, Councillor Dixon said, this has been collaborative working between a scrutiny committee where you have views and you can look at things and look at them from all different angles and refer them to Cabinet. And I'm very, very grateful of the work that you put in there and the task groups as well that have evolved from it all. And, and, and thank you, um, Councillor Osborne, for the work you have in leading this group forward. Much appreciated. Thank you. Should we take the vote again? Yes. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you very much indeed. Um, agenda item 34. 
In accordance with Council Procedure Rule 12, consideration be given to the motion to Council which has been submitted by Councillor Oliver as detailed on your agenda. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. I think we're all in agreement you know, that hybrid meetings under the emergency powers worked. And I look around at so many colleagues here that have to make these long journeys into the town hall during winter and various other times. And a comment was made recently that this may just encourage people to stand as councillors if they don't think they've got to make an arduous journey into the town hall to attend meetings. When you think about it, this motion, this, sorry, this idea is being put forward at East Sussex via the um, various means there, the District Council Network, the LGA, and our MPs are very supportive of this. You know, it really does work having these hybrid remote <coughs> meetings. And therefore, for all the reasons that are set out on this brief paper, I'd like to think that um, members would support this. Uh, where, where, where it would take us, I don't know, but I think that everyone does need to raise this point because it does make working as a councillor that much easier. And I know that so many of you attend other uh, parish councils and town councils. It must be very arduous at times, uh, where if you can plug into these meetings, it's going to make life, the quality of life, that much better for us all. And I would like you to support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Uh, do I have a second? And would you like to discuss? Councillor Pocha, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, happy to second this. Um, it is part of a bigger lobbying movement, really, um, because what the pandemic showed very clearly is that local government could deliver. And we are probably one of the most centralised governments in the whole of Europe. And often we feel as though we're just an administrative uh, arm of central government. And what I'm trying to say is we are good enough to actually make our own decisions. And we should be able to make our own decisions about what kind of meetings we held. We have had evidence that we can do it, so we did it through the pandemic. We know what kind of meetings where we need to be face-to-face -face and ones that are decision-making and that don't need to be. And I know, I know the Chief Executive has been trying to calculate, and I think we should be doing it, how much carbon we're saving if we don't drive all the way from Ticehurst or Robertsbridge or Settleston, wherever. Fair light. Um, the thing is that... The pandemic shows that we can be trusted. We can be trusted to deliver. And in fact, if they could really realise it, they can't do without us, and they being the government. Because we are flexible, uh, we're effective, we're responsive. Um, so I don't think we should be doing the government's bidding on this. And I hope you can support this fairly minor request is to do what we think is best. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Field, Jack Council Field. Thank you. And I apologise for the confusion last time. I think I was just late voting. Um, yes, I, I think also that Councillor Prochak has said largely what I wanted to, which is that I completely support this motion, but it doesn't go far enough. We should be allowed to make our decisions as to whether we meet remotely, to take all meetings and vote remotely, which currently we can't. And I believe that requires primary legislation um, because we were able to do it before because it was COVID emergency powers, and now it isn't. So we need to lobby as many people as we can to make sure that all councils are allowed to decide if they want to meet remotely and when they want to meet remotely. Because there's so much research to show that people who are working remotely work more productively. It's not a matter of how many hours you spend sitting at your desk, it's about what you produce at the end of it, however you've chosen to do it. So I fully support this and would like us to go much further and lobby anybody we can to make sure that we're allowed to have all our meetings remotely, if we want to. Councillor Coleman. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, and may I take the moment to congratulate yourself and Councillor Mir and invite you both 
uh, to come and visit Councillor Carol and I in Sydney at some point uh, for a lovely coffee in one of our coffee shops. Um, I want to uh, agree with Councillor Proshak and Councillor Field about this. I think a lot of us, I think, in all, all parts of the, uh, the chamber, when we first had to come back to, the, to this room, uh, when suddenly the rules were swept away from us that we could participate remotely, a lot of us were quite concerned, uh, myself included, um, because COVID was still around. And I think as a result of us coming back possibly too soon uh, and being forced to do so, a lot of staff and several councillors ended, ended up getting sick as a result. And I think it's slightly regressive and archaic to when the technology's there, when it's fairer, it's more accessible, uh, it's better for equalities, uh, and it's better for the environment for us to be forced into this weird sort of sticks and stones fire-making camp rather than looking forward to the future in the way that clearly I think things are going to be going. Uh, I believe they can now have remote participation uh, in Parliament again now. Um, I believe, I may be incorrect on that one, because it seems to flip-flop like a lot of things, but uh, I think this is a very sensible uh, thing for us to ask for. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Coleman. Anyone else? Councillor Osborne. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I would, I would support this, but, um, but the, only, the only sort of concern I have is Councillor Project mentioned the um, training, when it's nice to people to get together for training. And, and my only concern would be would that be the only time we would see fellow councillors is, is, is doing a bit of training? You know what I mean? You could, you could almost sort of, everybody says, well, yeah, save for those very local to the town hall. Us out in the sticks could, could quite easily take the easy option and just sort of sit at home with a jacket on, a shirt on and a pair of shorts and, um, and, and sneak a glass of wine under the table and, and, and be at the meeting. Um, Obviously, that doesn't happen. But, um, you know, so, so my, only, my only concern would be that, you know, we don't see each other as much. And I think, I think that was one thing from the pandemic in that, you know, we, we conducted meetings, we conducted meetings well, but there was also the concern that people don't see anybody. Um, you know, I was fine. I just went out and rode my bike. Um, but, you know, people who, who need to see someone, who need an interaction with someone, is that the same online as it is in a room for the people? So, so I, I agree with it, um, but that's just a little concern um, as I would have. But, but you know, having said that, only a couple of weeks ago, I attended the cabinet from the luxury of my office without having to drive over because there's only a very short agenda. There's one item for me to report on from scrutiny, so it made sense to do it from home. Save the fuel, save the time. Easy peasy. So yeah, I, I I agree with it, but I would just be, you know, I wouldn't want to sort of have four years when you basically possibly only came in here for an annual meeting, for example. You know, so that would be that would be a concern. It's, you know, I know we're different politically, but it's still nice to see people. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and and you know, have a conflict. And, and a discussion. So, so that's 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 what I, I I prefer. Maybe I'm a bit old school, but uh, you know I, I prefer to be in the building. But online's fine. But I would support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. I do agree. I think we all do enjoy the human touch, um, but at the same time, it would be nice to have the opportunity. The proof's in the pudding. It has been for two years. We've been doing it. And there's Ashan at home. There, I Ashan. Um, he's with us. I don't think you can ever get rid of the human touch. Councillor Williams. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I actually am with Councillor Osborne. I, I, I can see the common sense. People come from a long journey, and especially in the winter, it's very nice not to have to worry. But I do worry that if you've got new councillors coming in, that the interaction between them is, is not the same. And I think it's useful when everybody can actually meet up at meetings and, and see each other face to face. So I worry that it's going to be rather impersonal. Uh, and that uh, I think as it was working now that we have some meetings face to face and, and others online, that probably works quite well. But 
if we go down the route of having all meetings um, via Teams or whatever, we are going to lose that personal touch and that personal interaction, which I think would be a great pity. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Anyone else? Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chairman, and, and I think I echo some of the comments made by Councillor L. Williams and Councillor Osborne, but I think we've got to recognise what we're asking for here is the ability, the ability to decide ourselves how we want to do it. And if that is some in-person meetings, some hybrid meetings, take next Monday's Cabinet, two very short items, probably going to be 20 minutes. That could easily be done online, but today you wouldn't want this one done online. So I think what we're asking for in this motion is for the ability to decide how we conduct our business, and, and then work from there. And I, I quite agree, we do need in-person <coughs> meetings. The other thing we just need to be careful of while allowing people to stay at home is that we do not have absentee, absentee councillors. We, we read about councillors who decide to jet off to uh, the Bahamas and continue to be a councillor, and this would give them the opportunity to maybe to do that. And we've just got to make sure that that doesn't happen. But apart from that, I commend this to the council. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Dixon. I'll make a note of that one. Uh, have we uh, anyone else that would like to uh, uh, say something? So, shall we take a vote, please, on favour? Councillor Drayson. Oh, and do apologise, Councillor Giovanni, from home. Shall we take? I'll go to you, Councillor Giovanni. Thank you. I was just going to say, just to confirm, I'm not in the Bahamas. I'm working in Swindon. Otherwise, I would have been there. Excellent. Thank you. Councillor Grayson, did you still want to speak? OK, let's take it to the vote, people. All in favour? Thank you very much. So the annual meeting is now closed. Um, and thank you very much uh, for my first meeting. I hope it wasn't too bad. And um, this will be followed by meetings of each of the committees to elect their chairman and vice chairman. So I'm now going to hand over to uh, Malcolm, our chief executive, but stay where I am. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Chairman. I, I we'll take the committees in alphabetical order. So the first one will be audit and standards. Can I just remind members that only members of the committee can vote for the um, chair and vice chair. It, is, it isn't a general thing for all. So um, could I, well, the, first of all, I've got no nomination or no apologies for absence. So could I have a nominations for the election of chair for the municipal year for the Audit and Standards Committee. Councillor Cortell. Um, I'd like to nominate Councillor Brown Drayson. Um, I think after his superb work chairing the Constitutional Committee, he's clearly uh, very good at chairing, as other councillors have already said, and I would be delighted if he would chair the Audit and Standards Committee. Have we a seconder for, for that? Councillor Kirby Green, we... Yeah, we second, thank you. Have I any other nominations? In the absence of any other nominations, Councillor Drayson, you are duly elected as chair. Would you like to take, um, take the election of the vice chair, Councillor Drayson? Thank you. Um, are there any nominations for Vice Chair of the Audit and Standards Committee 2022 to 2023? Councillor Madeley. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I would like to propose Councillor Thomas as Vice Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Is that seconded? That's a vinyl. Oh, I can't. You can't. Yeah. That's a vinyl. Is that your pen? I can see above. Yes. That's a vinyl. Thank you. Uh, any other nominations? In that case, Councillor Thomas is Vice Chairman of Orders and Standards Committee for 2022-23. Thank you, Malcolm. 
Thank you, Councillor Drayson. Moving on to the Licensing and General Purposes Committee, I've had, there are no apologies or, or substitutes, so have I got nominations for election of chair for the Licensing and General Purposes Committee? Councillor Coleman. Ah, uh, thank you. I'd like to nominate Councillor Mir for chair of Licensing and General Purposes. I think we've heard enough about his integrity from Councillor Norton and Councillor Dixon, so I won't go any further, but yes, I nominate. And have I a seconder for that from the Licensing and General Purposes Committee? Councillor Field, yes, thank you for that. Have I any other nominations for the Chair of Licensing and General Purposes? No, in the absence of any other nominations, Councillor Mayor, you are duly elected and I'll hand over to you for the Vice Chair. Uh, th thank you, thank you very much. Uh, do I have nominations uh, from within the Licensing and General Purposes Committee for the Vice Chair? Nominations for Vice Chair, please. That's uh, yes. May Councillor May, Councillor Maidley. Sorry, may I propose Councillor Coleman as Vice Chair? Is, is there a seconder for that? I second. Councillor Timpey. So that. So, Councillor Coleman has been proposed and seconded. Um, are there any other nominations? No. Those in favour? All in favour? So, th thank you very much. You, you, you are duly appointed. Thank you. And there is another item on the agenda the appointment of members to the General Licensing Panel and Taxi and Private Hire Licensing Panel. <clears throat> and uh, the General Licensing Panel pool are the following members. Um, Councillors Bird, Brown, Coleman, Curtis, Errington, Field, Hacking, Maitley, myself, Thomas and Timpey. And, and to the Taxi and Private Hire Licensing Board, uh, Bird, Brown, Coleman, Curtis, Errington, Field, Hacking, Maidley, myself, Thomas, and Timpey. And uh, the recommendation is that it be resolved that members be appointed thereto other than on a political basis, NEMCON, no member objecting, uh, that the members listed above be appointed to serve on the general licensing panel pool and taxi private hire licensing pool, and an audit of members' potential interests be carried out. Uh, do I have a proposal for that? Councillor Coleman, and a seconder, Councillor Thomas. And uh, all, all those in favour? Thank you. That, that, that is carried. Thank you. And does that then conclude? That concludes the business of the uh, Licensing and General Purposes Committee this evening. It does feel a bit like time, a bit like the Eurovision Song Contest and getting the votes from various countries at times, but, um, we, but, but it isn't. It's the Overview and Scrutiny Committee we're now moving on to. Um, I've had no apologies or substitutes put forward, so could I have nomination for the election of Chair of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee? Councillor And do I have a seconder for Councillor Osborne? Councillor Mooney. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for, uh, for Chair? Councillor Osborne. Over to you for the election of Vice Chair. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, do I have um, someone to propose a Vice Chairman for, you know, for the Scrutiny Committee for next year? Or shall I move from my position, Councillor Cook? I'll do that. Can I? I'll move Councillor Cook. Do I have a seconder for Councillor Cook? Surely I can get a seconder. Ah, Councillor Gray. Thank you very much. Any other nominations for Vice Chairman? Nope. Kevin Dixon tried to put me off by scratching his head. Uh, <laughs> nope, that's good. No other nominations. So um, I'll take that. Councillor Cook, Vice Chairman. Uh, and just a brief reminder, tomorrow in here, 2 o'clock, scrutiny work programme. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. You can't say, members, you haven't been informed of it. That's at least the second reference that the Councillor Osborne's got in. So uh, thank you for that. 
And finally, the, the planning committee. Um, I have an apology for Councillor Stevens for the, for the planning committee, but can I have nominations for the election of chair for the municipal year? Council Project. Thank you. Councillor Vinehall. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Maidley, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Councillor Maidley. Do I have any other nominations for the chair of the planning committee? No, Councillor Vinehall, I'll hand over to you for the election of vice chair. Thank you. Can I have uh, nominations for vice chair of the planning committee, please? Or I will nominate myself. Do we have one? Yes, uh, Councillor Langland. Councillor Prochak, do we have a second, please? Mm -hmm. Councillor Gray. We only have the one nomination. All those in favour? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lionel. I was just testing that one of them was paying attention. Um, Chairman, I don't know if it's my role, so if I hand it back to you to say that that is, the, uh, that is all the committees duly elected. And that is all the committees duly elected, and I guess this is the end of the meeting. So, thank you very much indeed. Please be upstanding for the Chair of Royal District Council.